Assalamualaikum and hi. So today we look at the new subtopic from chapter 4, 4.2 Newton's Law of Motion. There is two learning objective that we'll be looking in this subtopic. The first one is 4.2a, state Newton's Law of Motion. And the second one is to apply the Newton's Law of Motion. So there are basically three Newton's Law. First, Newton's first law. And then we have Newton's second law. And we have Newton's third law. So basically, we have three laws that we need to know here. So the first law, the first law states that an object that is at rest will remain at rest or an object that is moving will continue to move in a straight line with constant velocity if and only if the net force of an object is zero. So, what does this first law state that? It gives us an idea of if an object at rest remain rest or if it's moving continue to move it will continue to move unless there's force acted on it unless there is force acted on it which means that we are trying to say here is the total force here is equals to zero there is the summation of the force leads to a zero here this gives an idea of the inertia all right for an example let us take um, an example of we sitting in a bus you're sitting in a bus you're going the bus is in a motion so you're going to experience the motion in your body as the bus applies a brake you are going to bring your body your body is going to be pushed forward okay even though the bus stop at that particular point you're going to experience a motion in your body because you were under the influence of inertia an object that is moving will continue to move all right so the first law here it states about the equilibrium of particles all right equilibrium of a particles is defined as the vector sum of all forces acting on a particle must be zero all right which means the summation f here is equals to zero so you can be having forces acting on that object however all those forces should lead to an equilibrium summation f must equals to zero all right so since our syllabus here we have two component the forces can be acting in x and y component so we will have summation f is equals to zero summation uh, sorry fx is equals to zero and summation fy is equals to zero as well all right so according to newton's first law so this is our Newton's first law where we talk about an object that is at rest will remain at rest or if it's moving will continue to move where there are two types of equilibrium all right according to Newton's first law there are two types of equilibrium the first one is what we call a static equilibrium all right we have static equilibrium what does static equilibrium means here is that the object is completely at rest. The velocity here is equals to zero. Object at rest, velocity is equals to zero. This is what we call a static equilibrium. However, there is another type of equilibrium here, which is we call it as dynamic equilibrium. All right. For dynamic equilibrium, the object is going to move in a straight line with constant velocity. All right. It is going to have a velocity that is constant so static equilibrium's object is at rest v is equals to zero dynamic equilibrium the object is moving with constant velocity all right we know that in chapter two we studied that constant velocity means acceleration is equals to zero submission sorry uh, the s a is equals to zero here all right there are a few strategy to solve problems related to equilibrium so what we have to do is first you have to identify all the forces that is present in the 
object okay identify all the forces acting on the object and then you draw the free body diagram by now we know how to draw free body diagram and then we are going to apply the condition for equilibrium of the particles where summation fx is equals to zero and summation fy is equals to zero and then we can solve the component equation for the unknown okay so this is all about newton's first law next we're going to look at the newton's second law all right newton's second law states that the rate of change of momentum of a moving body rate of change of momentum of a moving body is proportional to the net force and it is in the same direction as the net force acting so basically what you state is that the rate change of the momentum rate change of momentum is the delta p here or we can write it as the dp over dt where you're going to change the momentum in a certain period of time all right so this one is proportional to the net force net force is the total force here and the direction is in the same direction as the net force acting so the direction of the change in the momentum is the same as the direction of the total force so based on this we can deduce an proportionality here which is summation f the net force here is directly proportional to the rate change of the momentum okay Newton's a second law can also be written in terms of equation. So we are going to change this proportionality into equation such that we write in summation F is equals to dp over dt where momentum we have studied in chapter 3 is mass times velocity. So you substitute that into the equation. You will get an equation such as summation F is equals to v dm over dt plus m dv over dt the mass is not going to change the mass of an object is not going to change it's constant here so this one becomes zero the mass does not change with respect to time okay berat tidak akan berubah oleh sebab itu dm over dt is equal to zero so you are going to eliminate this term here so you will end up with summation f is equals to mass dv over dt and as you know, dv over dt here is the rate change of the velocity, which is basically the acceleration. So, it's m a here. So, based on the Newton's second law, we managed to conclude that the summation force must equal to the mass times the acceleration. Okay. Since this is a vector uh, expression, we can write in terms of component summation fx is equal to mass times acceleration along x component and summation fy is going to equal to mass times the acceleration along y component. Since you have a subscript x here, f is a vector and a is a vector so you're going to have subscript x for your acceleration as well. Same goes to your y component force along y component acceleration along y component because these two terms are the vectors here f and a are the vector mass is not a vector the direction of net force is the is in the same direction as the acceleration so if your object is going to accelerate to the right therefore you're going to have total net force along to the right as well Okay, and then finally we are going to look at the Newton's third law. Okay, what is Newton's third law is all about? Is it's all about every action force has a reaction force that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, which basically states that every action that is a reaction. All right, every action that is a reaction. For an example, we take a simple case here you have a table here and then let's say you placed a book on the table when you placed a book on the table this book is going to exert a weight force downward all right all right this is the action by the book on the table by the book on the table so next what is going to happen is that this table is going to react by creating another force 
we call it as a normal force upward okay besides that you can also have uh, this action reaction force whenever there is two object in contact or two surface in contact as long as there is two object is going to touch each other you're going to experience this action reaction force okay if two object interact the force f12 exerted by object 1 on 2 that is why we call it as 1 2 here because the force exerted by object 1 on 2 is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force 2 1 exerted by object 2 on object 1 Okay, so mathematically what we can say here is, let's say you have two objects here, they are in contact, this is object 1, this is object 2. Object 1 is going to exert a force on object 2, alright, on object 2 therefore 1 on 2 and then the black one here is the force exerted by the object 2 on object 1, F2 on 1. These two forces, they will have the same magnitude. F12 is equal to F21 in terms of magnitude. Alright, however, as you can see here, their direction is in the opposite direction. Alright, one is to the right, another one is to the left. Therefore, F12 is equal to negative of F21. They have the same magnitude but opposite direction so there are a few examples here the first one is when you push on a wall it will push back with the same force if you exert your if you push your hand against the wall here you're exerting a force on the wall however at the same time the wall will react by exerting a force here with the same magnitude but opposite direction usually the force that being exerted by the wall is what we call as a normal force because you are touching a surface. Remember, when we learn about identifying forces, any object that touches any surface, they are going to experience normal force. So this is basically a normal force exerted by the wall on the hand. Another example here is when a book is placed on a table, the normal force, which is the force by the table on the book, is the reaction force the book exert on the table so this is the same case as i have explained earlier on top here it's the same one so i'm going to quickly move to the next example here we have a rocket moves forward as a result of push exerted on the exhaust gases which the rocket has pushed out okay so what is going to happen here is you have a rocket here as the rocket has a forward motion here, it is going to exert a gas in the opposite direction. So this is the force by the gas on the rocket, or sorry, on the rocket, and then the rocket is going to exert force on the gas in the. So the problem solving strategy for dynamic problem is what you have, uh, there are a few steps here. You have to identify all the forces. Sama macam sebelum-sebelum ni, sentiasa bila jumpa, soalan dalam chapter 4, start with identifying forces dulu and then draw a free body diagram. Tak kisah lah seorang minta free body diagram ataupun tidak, start by identifying and drawing free body diagram. This helps a lot to solve the question. And then you can simply apply the summation fx is equals to max ataupun summation fy is equals to may and then solve the component equation for the unknown so basically selalunya in the question is either you want to know what is the acceleration of what the object is moving ataupun any of the forces exerted so contoh kita nak tahu apa nilai normal force atau apa apa nilai tension yang dialami pada objek itu so kaedah yang kita akan guna adalah ini kita akan guna summation f is equals to ma if the object is moving ataupun summation f is equals to zero depends on the question you have to see if the question ada acceleration kita guna yang pertama ini kalau tak ada acceleration all the forces should equals to zero this is kita panggil equilibrium this one kita panggil a dynamic the object is in motion so ini bila kita nak solve kita ambil summation fx max summation fy 
m a y and then ini summation f x is equals to zero summation f y is equals to zero and then you can do your table macam kita buat chapter satu resolving vectors masukkan dalam x, komp uh, x component y component and then you can simply sum them summation kita dah ada dekat sini